Yeah, it's, it would be a little bit of an exaggeration to call it a community. It was, it, I don't was know the little, extent, yeah, yeah. it was a little more than a cooperative household, but but it was the intention was for it to become a community. Can you describe yeah. like what was it called? What was it like? Well, we didn't have a name for it, um, but the the this was back in the uh, early seventies, uh, and in the early seventies, you could get a community of people together just by going on a street corner and saying, hey, I want to start a commune. And people would come from every corner <clears throat> to uh, to join because it was the Vietnam War years and everyone was rebelling against the status quo and so on. But what I wanted was an experimental community. The, the, the heart of Walden too is that nobody really knows how to make a better world. Um, I mean, everyone sort of knows a little bit. We, we can fix this, or we can fix that. It'll be better if this happened. And, you know, no disease, no poverty, no this, no that, no crime. <clears throat> but um, no one really has figured out exactly how to design a, how how a culture could implement uh, these this kind of ideal. So Skinner suggested experimenting uh, with our own lives, uh, get a community of people together, and literally, not, not figuratively, literally experiment with different cultural practices to see what their effects are. And the, the problem, as Skinner saw, the problem with uh, standard uh, governments is that they're top-down. They, they, they simply um, change things, but never control things, never measure things. Uh, the, the, the things that they, that they do are so um, so poorly controlled that it's very hard to draw conclusions from them. So he said, start small, uh, figure out how people can live together effectively and cheaply and most uh, uh, efficiently and so on, and then scale up from there. And I thought it was a great idea. Uh, and I was casting about for something to spend my life doing, so. You, you said was. Do you still believe that that it I, is a possibility? I absolutely believe okay. in the Walden too, and I, um, I, uh, getting something like that going, uh, you you can't just create it just like that. It's not like uh, it would be sort of like creating a a baby by by taking a little uh, potassium and some sugar and some uh, yeah. spice and so on. Uh, you. you uh, a community has to evolve and it, it's going to be a huge long process to get something like that going and one of the problems is that the the parent culture is so reinforcing that uh, that is it's 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 easy to have a pretty good life at least in the US um, uh, just by playing along the ordinary rules and uh, so you have to have something better than that. And for a small community to be better than something which is developed over you know, hundreds of years or thousands of years, I suppose, uh, it, it'll take, a, it'll take quite, a, quite a lot of time and effort and experimentation and so on to get something like that to the point where it's uh, at least as reinforcing as the parent community. Uh, but, I, um, but I do believe that that uh, that if it could get going, it would uh, it would solve a lot of problems. I agree. Uh, uh, let, let me just go back to the, to the 70s. In those days, I said it was easy to get a community going. It was easy to attract people who who um, wanted to change the world. Yeah. But the thing is, they all came with their own as they as as they must. They all came with their own preconceptions, and people um, had kind of dogmatic ideas of what, how it should be. What they didn't have was the faith in the experimental method. So that was the problem. Getting people who were willing to literally experiment, not just say, oh, this is experimental because we're doing something different, to uh, measure and control and, and only change those things that are, um, only change one variable at a time, more or less. Uh, so it was in light of uh, tactics of scientific research. Mm -hmm. um, that book was, 
very important to me in the sense of I had a mentor at the time. He was some 30, I'm just about to turn 30 now. Uh, he's a couple years older than me. He was uh, not obviously my, my main mentor in the field, but he was the one that was feeding me all the books and he read a lot ahead of me. You know, he was a couple years when it comes to the, yeah. I guess, the developmental <laughs> uh, experience that a lot of analysts get, you know, doing yeah. contextual work and things like that. And uh, he's like, you gotta read this and gotta check it out. And one of the things I love in there, you know, is that there's, it's not that your study failed, right? There isn't that failure in that sense. It's how you're framing your question, mm -hmm. how you're looking at the data, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I like to, to pitch to people, like, is there a, a time in which you, you know, thought like, damn, this was a big failure on my part. But like, in retrospect, it was a very valuable lesson. Oh, well, with respect to Walden too, um, I, uh, I wouldn't trade those years for anything. I, I, it was a terrific experience for me. For one thing, I had to learn, we, we had to learn everything from, uh, from the ground up about uh, what is life, what is a community, how, how do we get along, uh, who lives where, uh, how many cars, how, uh, uh, does everyone get their own little washing machine? Um, so how, we had to how far did this develop too? Well, we, we had a we had a house in 12 acres of land. At one point we had 75 acres of land, uh, but it was remote and we weren't able to use it. Um, uh, it, it was around a 10 year period where people were uh, coming and going. Um, and there were a couple of us that were constant through that period. But um, so m most of it was focused around everyday things like how to make a living and how to, uh, how to get the, uh, uh, the the beans planted and yeah, so the on. The most basic things working, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but one of the side effects was that I had to learn all aspects of life, like uh, how to do plumbing and electricity and and um, uh, wood cutting and uh, agriculture and auto mechanics and stuff. So uh, so I acquired a very versatile repertoire of sort of basic skills in life mm -hmm. that, have, that have stayed with me, you know, for the last 50 years. And, and uh, so that's just been a terrific asset. A lot of people don't get the chance to learn all those things because well, they're busy making a living somewhere. And, and I mean, I was trying to make a living too, but I was... Um, I have to call a plumber and electrician anytime I need help. Yeah, well... <laughs> or a family member. <laughs> yeah, well, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, the um, uh, we had a leak in our cellar, and, and uh, we have a spring up in the side of the hill, and it's a gravity-fed spring, and so water was just draining the sp spring right into our cellar, and um, I had to, well, I had to rig up a, a plumbing solution to it, and I rummaged around in the closet and came up with these soldering irons and, and, and pipes and faucets and things, and I was able to to cobble together a, a solution. But but that's the sort of thing I would not have been able to do if I hadn't gone through this Walden II experience. I wouldn't have had any experience with all the various sides of life. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the things about Skinner's Walden II that's actually in the book, and that is that everyone is has the opportunity to work in all different aspects of the community if they want to. Uh, and as a result, you you don't get bored. You, you're not just sitting at a desk all day long doing the same thing over and over again for 40 years until yeah. I give you a silver watch or a gold watch or whatever it's called. One of the things about the Walden II experience was it was extremely cheap. We, we were able to live, not elegantly, but we were able to live for next to nothing. Okay. Uh, and um, I was I started graduate school in those years, and so I was, um, I was living on peanuts almost. Uh, not, literally peanuts, but, but uh, close to it. But I was able to do so and emerge from all that without any debt uh, because cooperative living is extremely efficient. If you can solve the behavioral problem, it's, it's a way better system than everyone having their own little ecosystem that they've, it's got every dimension of life packed into it. Uh, so uh, not everyone needs their own washing machine, yeah. for example, or, or their own this or their own that. So uh, cooperative living is, is very inexpensive if you can um, manage the behavioral side of it. It's, it's potentially 
a way to save the world. Uh, and another thing that Skinner uh, mentions in Walden too is the idea that uh, if the system actually works, that is, if, if it really is better than the alternative, it will grow uh, relative to the parent community. That is, it will continue to prosper uh, and people will be attracted to it um, and people will flee a system that's not working in favor of a system that is working better. Uh, and so it would tend to eventually uh, evolve and uh, more or less take over the parent culture in, in time, I mean, over the course of mm -hmm. perhaps 100 years or something like that, uh, just the way, um, uh, well, cultures change through immigration or uh, uh, techno technological change, uh, something like a... a you know, on Monday, someone invents a new app for your for your phone, and by Wednesday, it's all over the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, cultural mutations can spread very, very rapidly. And if if a, if a Walden two is a kind of cultural mutation, it could spread uh, as rapidly. Well, it could spread rapidly, but not necessarily as rapidly as an app. All right, so now it's your turn. Like, share, subscribe. It actually makes a difference, and if you can, head over to patreon.com backslash the daily BA, the link's down below. Please help support this channel. It's ran and fueled by people just like you. There's over 160 people, and we have a long ways to go to make this sustainable. That's your daily BA.